Hello everybody, it's Edward Time again here and welcome back to another uh, movie review. And uh, today we're going to be talking about another Tony Jaws movie. I think this is his second big movie. It's called The Protector or Tom Yong Gung uh, in Thailand as known as that. But in uh, I think it's in uh, United States it was known, known as The Protector which is basically the same name as the 1985 like Jackie Chan movie I think which is not doing so well at the box office but yeah, um, so The Protector is, again, it's a second uh, Tony Just movie, and it tells a character that he played named Kam, which is basically, uh, you know, a, a guy who owns um, elephants, basically, from his own, uh, I guess you could say, a village. Um, and obviously he, but like one day, uh, the, his elephants got stolen, I think, by some other people, and that's where they, that's where they come, Tony Just character decided to go after the you know the people who stole his elephant you know? and that's become i guess the premise of the movie but there is like like other things in the movie that actually is like kind of complex i guess um and that kind of becomes the movie weaknesses so uh yeah uh so after i tell you the premise well we're gonna go to the usual stuff you know i'm gonna talk about what, what the what makes the movie great in my opinion but also the critic the criticism that i have for this movie because i have a criticism for this movie uh and we're gonna get to that later so but first we're gonna get to the good part first um obviously uh the, the best part is tony ja himself right the like he the way he performed the muay thai is amazing i think he create a new style in this one basically kind of uh kind of like a uh, like a muay thai but also have like this um uh they they call it elephant boxing basically and it was it was makes sense you know because like uh calm uh, the main character is searching for his elephant, you know. So I'm glad that Tony J is starting to like. Uh, I think he create or like introducing a new uh, style for Muay Thai, which is basically they call elephant boxing, um, or it, or it's called Muay Kodash Chasa. I think it was in in Thailand. I have no idea, <laughs> but either way, it's a new style, and it was like it was great. And uh, yeah, uh, and there is so many cool shots in this movie. Obviously, the this there there is a boat chasing and stuff like that, which is like okay, you know, it was pretty fun, but. It was that, I guess. <laughs> it was like it was okay. It was well done, but the other stuff that really makes this movie stand out is obviously the uh, the warehouse fight, you know, um, where Tony just basically finding uh, a bunch of like ro uh, a guy and that wear uh, like a roller shoes, you know, basically kind of try to hit some obviously in the warehouse, and then um, obviously they got some people who rides a bike, uh, some people ride motorcycles, some people ride like a, a like a car or something like that, and it was just like really really like. It was it was pretty insane, you know, this the stun and all that kind of stuff, and the way the camera moved, the way Tony just like moved, you know, like he was so uh, fast in this movie, obviously, and then especially everybody around him in that uh, warehouse scene was just like super fast because well they have roller shoes, right? So they just like uh, rolling around the the warehouse trying to like hit Tony just character, and it was just like yeah, it's amazing, and especially the way. You know, he take down some of them was amazing. The way he take down the the motorcycle guy is amazing, and then especially the last one, we he basically like uh climbing or like wasn't climbing but like jumping and like kind of kind of climbing I guess to through the glass and then like uh kind of like evading the guy that like tried to hit him. Like that was like amazing, and especially there is another stun as well that where you kind of like doing a, like a a backflip I think through uh and then like, against the wall and then he just like stays there you know and it was like. Well, you know, basically kind of like Spider-Man. Um, which again, like uh, Scott Atkins also did an interview with Tony Jaa. Obviously, they spoke about this movie, and it was like, it's really fun to watch. So I, ha I highly recommend you guys to go watch Scott Atkins interview with Tony Jaa. <laughs> like you get a lot of like behind the scenes stuff in that interview, and it was great, you know. And the other stuff as well that I think is great, um, is where Tony just kind of like, <laughs> like running around the fences, I think, where he's just like evading everybody's around him and then like especially they have, they have to get the timing right you know with the cameraman himself like it was just like a, a lot of effort and a lot of like amazing stunts you know it was just it was great you know um but the other scene that i think this is my my favorite action scenes in the movie is basically when tony just uh or come get to the the restaurant i think the underground restaurant and then like the camera just kind of like follow him around for like four minutes straight you know like it's a four minute long take uh fight scene basically where Tony just kind of like just uh like climbing to like level like the the first the first level the second level the third level the fourth level right and they just like a put a bunch of guys uh throughout his way like throwing him around like throwing him around off their the, the balcony and stuff like that it was like super amazing to watch you know and apparently um I don't know how long it takes to film that scene apparently I I heard uh 
they, some people say it was five takes and some people said 10 takes so i have no idea but one thing for sure they they filmed that scene for like a, one month like one month period they, that it was dedicated to that scene and it was like yeah i mean <laughs> i can see what it takes one month man like it like it's four minutes uh long and then obviously you have you have to get the timing right on every single scene every single uh item that got thrown or like a, or like guy a stun guy that basically got you know beating up right like they have to get the timing right because if not then well they probably have to repeat that again which this that's why it takes a month to do and that's why i just like really respect that scene a lot and to this day i still really watched that and it was like wow <laughs> equally amazed you know um and i guess there is some uh good fight scene as well between tony ja and uh uh johnny johnny tringuyan uh we basically uh a martial artist as well where they they find once you know which is like kind of a shame because i kind of want to see them fight more but they fight once and it was pretty great you know i think johnny is a pretty good martial artist obviously and then Tony just was like really angry like his character was like really angry at that scene it was like great you know um but yeah uh and the other one is the the fight scene in the buddhist temple i think or like a Buddhist place basically where there is a bunch of martial artists obviously where fight again come and then there's a bunch of a bunch of like cool shot in it because there is a bunch of waters around so you kind of see the effect and then you see the the guy performing the the move you know with his leg you know it was it was like super crazy um and then there's another guy using a sword and stuff like that and then obviously there is a wwe like uh actor i think uh called named nathan jones i think where he basically just like uh jump in into the scene and then just like beating the shit out of like calm and he just like he basically you know a monster basically and i i i usually when they introduce that kind of scene where like a, a martial artist like a small guy for sort like a big wwe like fighters you know like usually i was like okay like obviously in real life like nathan jones is going to win right but at the same time uh i'm glad that he so like i'm glad the movie actually showed that the way that he, he kind of win in the first round and then like the second round obviously you know what happened right and you know obviously the final fight scene you know where tony just character basically just break like i think he i think 58 man if i'm not mistaken where he break every single character's like bone and stuff like that which and it was just like a continuing shot like it was like wow you know amazing and obviously again another fight scene with nathan jones and uh the other martial artists as well it was great you know and i think um some of the shot that where he kicks the guy from the helicopter was, was also amazing and yeah, I think that's the that's the good part the, about the movie, I guess. Um, and the music as well is pretty good, in my opinion. Even though I think I think Ombak music is better, but this one is also pretty good, you know. Especially the music where he climbed the stairs, you know, for four minutes long, it was great. But after all the positive one, um, I think we're gonna get to the the, the criticism that I had that I have for the movie. Um, and the, my problem with this movie is that it's it's kind of like bloated, in my opinion, because like. He has so many characters and he has so many elements in the movie that didn't really flow that well in my opinion like the pacing wasn't that well um when i first watched the movie there's a moment that i feel bored and i was like what the hell is going on and stuff like that you know like why is this shot here and stuff like that and it's just like i feel like they just like desperate to get to the action sequences because again action sequences or like the martial arts sequence is the best part of the movie like it's the positive part about the movie obviously but it feels like they just like they they try to make the movie based on that fight scene alone so they tried they it's like they have they have, they they all have the fight scene but they didn't exactly have the story again like i'm not saying that's the case entirely but like after i watching the movie it felt that way that's what i'm trying to say it felt that way but that's probably not the way the movie is made uh, they probably already have the story idea first um but it kind of felt uh the other way for me that it's, it's just like it seems like they create the fight scene first right and then they create the story around it afterwards you know and that's why i feel like it doesn't flow quite well and some of the characters just like you know it's just like too many characters like too many uh moments and scene that it's just like yeah i mean it, it kind of makes sense i guess but it's just like it felt uh sometimes it felt forced you know whether it's like a bunch of guys just searching for like where's mark where's mark you know which again basically also played uh, by the same actor as uh humley or george from the uh the the first ombak movie obviously um and yeah like i feel like that scene kind of just like weird to me like it was supposed to be threatening but i was like mm, this is kind of weird and kind of funny in a way that it just like they specifically made this scene so we can get to the buddhist temple fight scene right so it's like i don't know like the movie doesn't qu flow quite well for me and it was like really unfortunate you know and i know people are probably gonna bring 
uh, the first Raid movie, the Raid 1, into this uh, conversation. But at the same time, the Raid 1 is just like a small movie. Like, it's a, it has a simple premise. They, like, a bunch of cops or SWAT team raiding our apartment, and then they got trapped, and then they fought a bunch of bad guys, and then that's it. You know, there is some little story there, right? There is a little backstory for Rama's character, but that's about it, you know. But the entire movie itself doesn't try to be big, you know. It was just like a simple movie, you know, like... The protector or Tom Young Goon is just like trying to be like a big movie, you know, and with a big storyline with a multitude of characters. Like it, it clearly tries, but I feel like it doesn't flow quite well. You know, I think that's that's the the biggest problem with this movie that it doesn't flow well. Some of the scene kind of like I don't know. I just wanted to be over and get to the fight scene, obviously. And there are moments then where we get to the fight scene, I was like kind of tired of the movie where it was like. The, the dialogue and then the conversation was just like okay like i okay i, I know you guys try to move along to the to the uh, next fight scene here i get that but when the fight scene actually happened i was like kind of exhausted for the first time you know and obviously rewatching the movie i just like skipped to the action sequences and it was like yeah it's a 10 out of 10 <laughs> you know the, the action sequences not the story not the pacing is terrible um so it's really unfortunate you know because i feel like a uh, martial arts movie should be uh, it should have a good story, but also have a great action. You know, I know people want to see the action, and I get that. But I feel like the story is also important because, well, it's a movie, right? It needs to flow quite well. Like the biggest, the again, I feel like the raid is the best example. Not maybe not the raid, but like a police story. You know, by Jackie Chan was like the best example that it has like three martial arts sequences. I think you know, I guess you, if four if you count the intro, but I don't think there is any fights in the in the beginning of that movie. But yeah, if you guys remember correctly, there's only three fights in you know the where he basically got ambushed that right and then the mansion fight scene and then obviously the mall fight scene like that's about it you know like the rest of them just like story stuff but that movie is like flew quite well to me because i mean it's jackie chan right he's really good actor uh but also the story was like yeah it, it flowed quite well and it was like funny at times and it was like really enjoyable this movie is not <laughs> like if you if i want if i'm to rewatch it again for the second time I, I can't like I have to I, I'm just like I'm just gonna skip to the action sequences because I don't really want to see and wait to the story all over again because it's just like not fun it was like not uh, again it doesn't like it doesn't flow that well you know and it was like really unfortunate um but yeah either way I still like the movie obviously because it's Tony Ja the action is great so I think this is like the the two movies that make Tony Ja famous is Ombak obviously and then this movie The Protector you know and yeah, gotta give credit to do, right? Um, but either way, guys, uh, that's my review for the Pract the Protector or Tom Young Goon. Um, I guess you guys can let me know in the comment section below what do you guys think about this movie right here, you know? Do you guys like it? Do you guys hate it, you know? What do you guys think about the, the story, you know? Like, do you think this is, is, do you think it's flowed that well? What do you guys think about the pacing, you know? And what do you guys think about the fight scene? Which one is your favorite fight scene in the movie? Mine is, is the, the four minutes long take, you know, in the, in the club scene, you know? Or like the restaurant scene, um, I think that was like the best one for me. Uh, but yeah, so let me know which one is your favorite fight scene, guys, um, if you don't mind. If you haven't watched this movie, then well, give it a watch, but just be aware that the story doesn't flow quite well. And there is like multiple characters that, yeah, you know, but the action and when the action is happening, sometimes it's kind of felt forced, you know, sometimes. But for the most part, it was like, OK, you know. Um, but yeah, so just a heads up, you know, <laughs> I have to give this movie a rating, then I'm probably going to give this movie 8.5 you know um if i'm being really objective here then it's, this movie is probably going to be a hard seven for me uh maybe even six for some people out there right who knows because again the story is just like not that well done but because you know, only ja and the action i think i'm gonna give this movie an 8.5 so there you go um if you guys enjoyed this review then you know leave a like comment subscribe uh, share the videos ring the, not the bell for notification obviously and um, yeah, I guess stay tuned for more reviews in the future. I don't know where it's going to be. Uh, maybe it's going to be The Raid 2 or Marantau or like other martial arts movie maybe. Uh, but we'll see guys. Um, either way guys, I'm uh, I'm thankful for, for people who, you know, kind of watch The Raid and then Ombak review. You know, there's only like six or seven people honestly. But like, yeah, I'm thank thank you guys for watching that review because I'm, I'm, having, I'm having a fun time like uh, making it and obviously editing the video. Like, uh, like I'm, I feel like, I'm kind of working, I guess, <laughs> kind of, right? But it's just like, yeah, it's pretty fun, you know? Uh, and I'm glad that I can share my opinion with you guys, even though no one really watches it at, at this moment. But I'm I'm hoping in the future people will watch it, you know? Um, but either way, guys, uh, thank you for people who still supporting the channel. I really appreciate you guys so much. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for more, again, more movie reviews in the future. 
And again, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I will see you guys in the next one then. Bye.